Yeah, this mushroom is definitely much hotter than the surrounding areas. Wow, uh -huh, look at that. Spiders are in here, that's for sure. In the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, everything was total chaos and confusion. Once the highly radioactive dust settled, some brave scientists ventured into the infamous Chernobyl exclusion zone. What's like dangerous level? Thousands. They were there to study the impact of the nuclear catastrophe. What they've uncovered is nothing short of astonishing. Finally, we can reveal some of the strange secrets from the most terrifying disaster of all time. From the abandoned fairground to the forest of blood, here's the 20 weirdest things ever found at Chernobyl. <sighs> Number 20. The Abandoned Carnival of Pripyat the Chernobyl Amusement Park, officially called the Park of Culture and Rest, was never used by city residents. Because it was supposed to open on May 1st of 1986, five days after the accident. The park had a huge Ferris wheel, which has become the symbol of the abandoned city. It also had bumper cars, a parachute ride, a shooting range, and a lot of other fun stuff to do. As grass and plants go through the cracks in the concrete floor, these rides are going back to how they were before they were built. Some parts of the Pripyat amusement park still have a lot of radiation. This is because planes carrying radioactive dirt use the park as a landing strip. The rest of the dirt was then washed into the ground. As in other parts of Pripyat, the moss in the park can be very toxic, so you should stay away from it. But most trips include a stop at the Pripyat amusement park. If you follow your guide's advice and don't touch anything, you should be fine. The Palace of Culture had a movie theater, a big indoor basketball court, and a dance hall. The inside of the building has been broken into and looks like it's a spot from after the end of the world. The Pripyat Ferris wheel and the rest of the Chernobyl amusement park can be seen through the broken glass on the basketball court. You know what's even more fun than a radioactive amusement park? Americano! So smash that like button and let us know how you feel. Why not subscribe for some more creepy content like this? Time for the rare topic. In the creepy quiet of Chernobyl's abandoned ruins, a group of daring vloggers came across a strange sight. In one of the broken down houses, they saw a muscle-bound man with skin like a deer's and regal deer horns growing out of his head. The man seemed friendly and spoke with his eyes and gentle movements. The vloggers were blown away. But just as it looked like they'd made a friend, bright searchlights went on and guards shouted at them to leave the area, so everyone scattered, including the deer man. Everyone was amazed by the story of the man who looked like a deer. What scientists discovered in the Chernobyl forest shocked the whole world, and the mysterious figure in the center of Chernobyl left the world with plenty of questions. How do you think the man who looked like a deer turned out like that? Could more magical creatures be hidden deep in the radioactive city? Comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know what you think about what we just showed on screen. And with that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19, the bloody red forest. The plants around the nuclear plant were badly burned. The trees got so much radiation, they burned from the inside out and turned red. The exclusion zone's most dangerous and toxic spot is still around red forest. After the incident, the wind blew to the north and it went to the west. Because of this, most of the damage was in areas closer to these two directions. The radiation did a lot of damage to the forest, which was mostly made up of pine trees. If a person had been there when the meltdown happened, he or she would have died in a matter of seconds. Oh yeah, and by the way, the glowing trees, they're not a myth. Light was generated from particles and nuclear decay interaction with tree enzymes. It could be seen at night during the first month after the crash. Pine trees can absorb these particles. On the one hand, this makes them great shields, but if they burn, everything gets released into the atmosphere. Before a wildfire could break out, which happens often in the area, and burn the trees, the people in charge of the cleanup cut them down and bury them on the spot. Number 18. Creepy Dolls of Pripyat As the town was quickly evacuated, the schools and hospitals are still in more or less the same condition they were in that day. 
Hundreds of discharged gas masks litter the floor of the school canteen. Soviet propaganda still hangs on classroom walls, and creepiest of all children's dolls are scattered all around. But not everything's what it seems to be. Many dolls are arranged on beds with pillows under their heads or beside gas masks. You might think this is just the way they were left when the children had to run for their lives, but the truth is a bit more mundane. Visiting people have left the dolls as a memorial to the children who used to live here. So they're recent additions, but nevertheless, pretty creepy. Number 17, Graffiti of Pripyat. Street art has sprung up in Pripyat's abandoned buildings and disturbing ruins as a surprising means of expression. Artists worldwide have entered the exclusion zone to leave their mark on the walls and buildings. This has turned the once desolate area into an open air gallery with bright colors and messages. The art often has themes about remembering, being aware of surroundings, and how life goes on even after disaster. These beautiful and moving works show that the human spirit is strong, and that the Chernobyl accident greatly affected art and culture. Over the years, the street art that's developed in Pripyat is just as unsettling as the city itself. For example, one shows a little boy looking around the corner of a wall, and another boy begging for help. Others show wild bears and deer that have moved back into the area now that it's basically a nuclear desert. Graffiti is one inventive and creative way to show how they feel about the exclusion zone and the disaster. Number 16, the Stalkers of Chernobyl. A stalker is someone who goes against the rules set by the government and sneaks into the zone. They might do this out of curiosity, a need for adventure, or just because they found a way to get in without being seen and thought, why not? These stalkers are a group of young Ukrainians who sneak into the zone to explore the vast desert on their own terms and hide in the shadows of this area. It's a word and cultural idea that has a lot of meaning in this part of the world. It was first used in the science fiction novel Roadside Picnic, written by Russian twins Arkady and Boris Strugatsky in 1971. It tells the story of how aliens pollute Earth's zones where rogue stalkers look for valuable alien technology. Andrei Tarkovsky's cult masterpiece film Stalker was based on the book. Both Roadside Picnic and Stalker, which came out 15 and 7 years before the disaster at Chernobyl, were prophetic. Also, a group of young Ukrainian artists launched Stalker in 2007. It's a first-person shooter video game set in the Chernobyl exclusion zone after the end of the world. Number 15, Basement of Hospital 126. In the once bustling Pripyat City Hospital, number 126, a weathered sign says, health of the nation, the country's wealth. This is a frightening irony. This hospital, which was on Druzby Narodov Street in the Pripyat Micro District, was an important part of the city's carefully planned healthcare system. The structure, called C-126, had several wings and buildings. These included things like clinics and outpatient units linked to the main wing. With 410 beds, the Pripyat City Hospital was ready to handle any medical emergency. It had everything from a dental clinic to a maternity room, a center for infectious diseases, and a morgue. The city's leaders had hoped for a safe and prosperous community, but they couldn't have known about the terrible things that happened on April 26 of 1986. The Chernobyl nuclear accident broke the idea that people were safe and doing well, get into a ghost town. And this hospital had some of the highest radiation readings. The last place you would ever want to be if you were sick. Number 14, radiation eating Chernobyl fungi. Scientists have found that a fungus that's lived in the Chernobyl area for a long time can actually eat radiation. Since at least 2007, scientists have known about this fungus and other organisms called extremophiles that can live in places with a lot of radiation or other harsh conditions. The type of mold found in Chernobyl can break down radioactive materials like hot graphite in the ruins of the Chernobyl reactor. The fungus actually grows towards the places that are the hottest and have the most radioactivity. So how can this fungus live this way with so much radiation? Well, it turns out it's mainly because it has a lot of very dark melanin pigment, which soaks up radiation and turns it into energy, safely. 
Scientists think this process could be used to make biomimetic materials that stop radiation and turn it into a source of energy that can be used repeatedly. Extreme background radiation makes Chernobyl a very dangerous place to go. A radiation blocker that could treat protective suits or even the whole inside of the plant to decrease background radiation would be a big help. Even so, this world is full of machines and tools that safely use radiation for various tasks. If we had this new technology, it might help these machines use less energy. Number 13. Mutated Animals of Chernobyl Scientists at the University of Stirling found that animals in lakes near the Chernobyl nuclear plant have more genetic changes than in lakes that are further away. This gives us new information about how radiation affects wild species. After the disaster in 1986, DNA tests on freshwater crabs called Daphina showed that there were more genetic diversity in lake groups exposed to the most radiation. The study's lead author, Dr. Stuart Auld, says radiation is the main cause of these genetic changes. This can be thought of as a kind of experiment in evolution. Usually, you have to wait generations to see how the environment changes mutations, and most animals with mutations don't live very long. The experts were able to find these mutations by analyzing non-coding DNA. This genetic code doesn't change how an organism looks or works. As part of her PhD, Dr. Jessica Goodman went to lakes near and far from Chernobyl and used a boat and a net to catch crabs. She flew the samples back to Dr. Ald's lab in Scotland where the DNA was examined. We all know that the short-term radiation exposure is bad, but low amounts maybe aren't as bad as we think? And after humans left the area around Chernobyl, many animals did do well, despite the mutations. It turns out that humans are maybe much worse than radiation. Number 12. Old Ladies of Chernobyl After the accident at Chernobyl, the Soviet government moved about 116,000 people out of the exclusion zone and put most of them in flats outside the zone. But some people who lived in the smaller nearby towns didn't want to leave. They lived through Joseph Stalin and the Nazis, so they weren't going to run away from a threat they couldn't even see. Some even returned to their homes after a few years, while others didn't even wait that long. Even though the government didn't like it, what could they do? Have you ever told a grandma what to do? It's not easy. About 1,200 people, called self-settlers, moved back into the restricted zone in the months and years after the accident. Most were over 48 years old, and about 80% of the few still alive today are women. It's not like the self-settlers don't know about the risk. These grandmas have heard about a million different ways to explain it to them. Even though they knew the land is polluted, they still grow food. Even though it's dangerous to eat meat grown in the exclusion zone, they raise chickens and pigs there. Many of them are in their 70s or 80s, and they're still mostly healthy, so I guess that's all the proof they need. That and babushkas are tough and stubborn. Number 11, Taurus. Taurus are the weirdest thing you can find in the exclusion zone. Every year, 12,000 people go to the restricted zone. Is it safe to go? Kind of. One famous travel company offers 11 hours of excitement, plus a dosimeter and a respirator. Well, that's something, I guess. In recent years, travel to Chernobyl has become increasingly popular, bringing in curious people from around the world. Once off limits because of high radiation levels, the Chernobyl exclusion zone is now open for day trippers. Since the accident in 1986, the ghostly remains of Pripyat have been stuck in time. Tourists can go there and check them out. They also get to go to where the terrible explosion happened, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Even though there are some safety steps, tourists should follow strict rules to limit their radiation exposure. The tours give a haunting look at what happened after the accident and are a stark warning of what can happen in a nuclear mishap. The HBO drama Chernobyl caused a lot of people to visit the area, and some tour companies even created tours based on the places and events in that show. Some hotels in the area asked that you leave your, quote, radioactive shoes outside, but it's unclear if the tour company helps eliminate nuclear shoes. But even though you can't wear your radioactive shoes in your hotel room, you probably don't want to keep them for your journey home anyway. Number 10. Giant Sarcophagus The plant itself might not be as creepy as the empty eyes of those decomposing plastic dolls looking at you, but from a rational point of view, it is the scariest thing in the exclusion zone by far. 
The huge plug known as the sarcophagus, made of 14 million cubic feet of concrete and just over 8,000 tons of metal, was the only thing between the failed fourth reactor and the rest of the world, until recently. Workers built the first sarcophagus in five to seven minute shifts, because longer shifts could have killed them right away, instead of leaving them to die a slow, painful death from cancer years later. The first sarcophagus was not known for its great ability to keep radiation from leaking into the environment, but it was better than nothing. It took experts 20 years to come up with a better answer. When the new sarcophagus was finally finished, it took 18 ships and 2,500 cars to move it from Italy to Chernobyl. It was finally put in place in November of 2016, and it now stands bravely over the broken reactor. It was also one of the largest objects ever transported by human beings. Number nine, room full of gas masks. If you're really into ruins, you should go to the Chernobyl Gallery, which says that the middle school number three has the most photographed collection of gas masks in all of Pripyat. In one of the crumbling building's rooms, there are so many gas masks that it looks like a carpet. There's also a doll wearing a gas mask sitting on a stool in the middle of the room because it's Pripyat, and there's got to be a creepy doll somewhere. If you stand in the room and try to figure out what happened to cause all those gas masks to be on the floor, you might imagine a scary scene, like a bunch of scared kids trying to put on their masks as a cloud of radiation blows into the room. But as is usually the case, the truth is much more boring. Most of those gas masks were in storage at the time of the disaster, and no one who worked or went to middle school number three probably ever took them out. Most likely, they were taken down a few months or years later. If you look closely at the masks, you'll notice that the filters have been removed. This was probably done by thieves who wanted to get the small amount of silver inside. Maybe someone out there is wearing jewelry made of radioactive silver. Number 8. Radioactive Spiders Near the end of World War II, many old B-movies showed spiders and bugs that had been morphed into terrifying radioactive giants. And let's not forget Spider-Man himself, of course. World War II ended when two nuclear bombs were dropped on Japan. Since then, the idea of creepy crawlies changing into monsters because of nuclear radiation has become a common theme in many movies. Scientists have been able to study the effects of nuclear radiation on invertebrate populations thanks to the detonation of many nuclear bombs. The controversial practice of dumping nuclear waste and industrial accidents like Chernobyl. They got plenty to go on. Researchers haven't yet proven the persistence of insects or spiders that have changed into giants and can destroy cities, but there have been tales of a huge mutated spider in Chernobyl. Even though these stories are probably made up by people with active imaginations, one thing is for sure. Radiation from nuclear fallout has caused insects and spiders to change. Timothy Masiu, a scientist, was walking around the abandoned town of Pripyat in Ukraine in 2011. Masiu wanted to find animals that had changed because they'd been exposed to radiation. He eventually found a fire bug that had lost an eye spot because of radiation. He later found a lot of insects with different patterns of spots. These changes were caused by radiation. Masiu also found a lot of spider webs that looked very strange. He thinks that spiders with mutated web spinning genes may have made these webs. Number 7. Graphite Crane Claw The claw is still standing all by itself in a dead part of the forest on the edge of Pripyat. It was left there when the disaster cleanup from 1986 was done. The claw is a big crane used to help clean up the radioactive graphite and debris that blew out of the reactor 4 and onto the nearby roofs of the power plant in the weeks after the incident. When the claw was no longer useful, it was taken from the crane and thrown deep in a forest. I have 136, you have to manage the center. Where it was hoped that no one would find it. It's now a scary memory of the disaster that happened there. The claw has been vandalized twice, which is a shame. It's something of an icon of Chernobyl. In November of 2019, a group of attackers sprayed the claw with pink paint. It was restored to its original yellow-golden color, and only a few stalkers have tried to graffiti it again. Number 6. The Blackbird of Chernobyl 
Before the disaster at the Chernobyl power plant in April of 1986, people who lived there and worked there began to see weird stuff. Workers at the power plant started seeing a monster that looked like a big black bird, or a dead man with wings that were 20 feet long and red eyes. The thing was later called the Blackbird of Chernobyl. People who saw the Blackbird started to have bad dreams and started getting frightening phone calls. Some even met the flying beast in person. Strange things kept happening up until the morning of April 26th of 1986. Some people think the Blackbird was a sign of bad luck for the people of Chernobyl, while others think it was the feared Mothman, a creature that scared the people of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, before the Silver Bridge fell on December 15th of 1968. The accounts are eerily similar, and in both cases, people had bad dreams and scary phone calls before major disasters happened. Number 5. The Elephant's Foot Brave Soviet workers went to the site of the disaster to try to stop the nuclear particles from spreading. Under Reactor 4, they found something strange. A 7-foot-wide mass of highly radioactive waste, sand, glass, metal, and other things. The mass was so dense, it weighed more than 100 tons. It was so hot that it burned all the way down to the bottom, destroying the area that was supposed to keep it in. The name Elephant's Foot came from the way the mass looks, which is, in a word, wrinkly. In 1986, it was so radioactive that just five minutes of contact was enough to kill you in 48 hours. Even so, a few brave Soviet workers broke down the door to the basement and went in to take pictures. Even now, spending an hour in that basement would be very dangerous. Number 4. Cooling Pond the Chernobyl Cooling Pond is a man-made pond. Its main job at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant was to cool down the heat exchangers of the four nuclear reactor units. The cooling pond is on the right bank floodplain of the Pripyat River. It's protected by a wall that's 25 kilometers long. Before the terrible accident on April 26, 1986, the pool was an important part of how the Chernobyl nuclear power plant worked. But after the blast, which sent huge amounts of radioactive material into the air, the cooling pond and many other places nearby became highly contaminated. After the Chernobyl accident, the cooling pond was left empty, and the high amounts of radiation destroyed the species that used to live there. Number 3. Chernobyl's Nuclear Reactor Fuel In 2012, a fragment of radioactive fuel was found at the site. Scientist Carl Willis made the discovery in a heavily contaminated environment. Radiation was measured using a Gamma Scout and a Geiger-Muller tube. The less sensitive Geiger-Muller tube measured around 70 microsieverts per hour, an unusually high reading. Due to the extreme radiation levels, the fragment had to be left in place and buried for safety. According to Frank Von Hippel, a Princeton University scientist who co-founded the program on science and global security, the Chernobyl plant featured fuel rods carrying 500 pounds of uranium that were immersed in water at least 49 feet deep with an active cooling system. When the recent war in Ukraine caused power outages at the Chernobyl plant's key cooling system, some feared that spent nuclear material might boil. However, nuclear specialists argued that there's no imminent threat, since time and physics are on the side of safety. The prevailing concern was the power failure would force the backup generators for the cooling system to shut down, allowing the radioactive fuel rods to heat up and boil away the water that also helps cool them, raising the temperature to 1,470 degrees Fahrenheit and sparking a fire but that's, quote, pretty unlikely in this situation because the fuel is so cool, according to Edwin Lehman, the Union of Concerned Scientists Nuclear Power Safety Director. It would take years before this became a risk, so let's hope he's right about that. Number two, stray dogs. During the evacuation, people were told to leave their pets behind. To stop the spread of radiation sickness and disease, Soviet forces killed some of the animals that were left behind. But some animals found places to hide, and they continue to live there. Years later, hundreds of wild dogs roamed the 2,600-kilometer exclusion zone. No one knows which dogs are the direct relatives of pets that were left behind, and which may have come from somewhere else. All of them are now zone dogs, though. And do they have green fur? 
well, no, but you probably wouldn't want to pet him for too long either. Scientists from the University of South Carolina and the National Human Genome Research Institute have started looking into the DNA of 302 wild dogs found in or near the CEZ to learn more about how radiation may have changed their genomes. This new study found that the wild dogs living near the Chernobyl power plant were genetically different from the dogs living in Chernobyl City, which is only about 10 miles away. This may seem like a strong sign that these dogs have changed, or evolved quickly, because they were exposed to radiation, but this study is just the first step in proving that theory. But the DNA of the dogs that walk around the Chernobyl power plant shows that more research does need to be done on how radiation affects bigger animals. Number 1. Vodka made from radioactive Chernobyl apples a group of British and Ukrainian experts are fighting with the government of Ukraine in court to get back 1,500 bottles of something known as atomic vodka. This unique liquor is made from radioactive apples grown near Chernobyl by the nuclear power plant. It's a part of a four-year project to see if crops grown in the polluted area can be used to make something safe to eat. The experts got the apples from a farmer inside the exclusion zone. They thought good farming could start again in this area, which would help the people living near Chernobyl. In 2019, rye grain and water from the exclusion zone were used to make the first bottle of Atomic. Scientists had planned to send in their first batch to the UK in 2022, with the money from sales going to help the people of Chernobyl. But the Ukrainian officials took the bottles away from a whiskey plant, saying that there were problems with the customs papers. Even though there are worries about customs, the experts think their studies show that the contamination levels in the exclusion zone's outer ring are now low enough to make farming safe. During the boiling process, they removed any radiation from the apples. This made the booze safe to drink. Well, as safe as booze can ever be. Do you think we'll see another nuclear disaster like Chernobyl in the future? What's your opinion on nuclear energy? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff, showing up on screen right now. See you next time.